This is a video supplement to day 136. Here I will walk through two examples, an example of the law of sines and an example of law of cosines and how we can use them to solve a triangle. In example one on page 444, we're told that a satellite orbiting the Earth passes directly overhead at observation stations in Phoenix and Los Angeles. Those two cities are 340 miles apart. At an instant when the satellite is between these two stations, its angle of elevation is simultaneously observed to be 60 degrees at Phoenix and 75 degrees at Los Angeles. How far is the satellite from Los Angeles? So we have the angle measure here, 60 degrees, angle of elevation in, at Phoenix, and 75 degrees, the angle of elevation in Los Angeles. We know the distance between those two is 340 miles. Our objective is to find how far the satellite is from Los Angeles. So I think we're looking for lowercase b as our angle measurement, or as our length measurement here. Now in this scenario, we have two known angles and an included side. So this is ASA, which is case number one. This would allow us to use the law of sines. So the law of sines states that sine of capital A over lowercase a is equal to sine of capital B over lowercase b, which is equal to sine of capital C divided by lowercase c. If I fill in the known data, we have sine of 75 degrees over A, which is unknown, sine of 60 degrees over B, which is unknown, but that's the one that we're looking for, which is equal to sine of angle C divided by length 340 miles. What would be really helpful is if we knew what sine of angle C was, because if I had sine of angle C, then I'd have a complete fraction, a complete ratio here. I could use that to cross multiply and divide to solve for our missing angle, or I'm sorry, our missing length B. Fortunately for us, finding angle C is relatively easy to do because we know that the total angle measure for three angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So when I subtract away 75 and I subtract away 60 degrees, that tells me exactly what the angle at point C is. And that comes out to be 45 degrees. So I'm going to change this now. Instead of reading as sine C, I'll read it as sine of 45. Now personally I'm no longer interested in this first ratio because I have no need to calculate side length A and I no longer have a need for angle measure A. So I'll ignore that first fraction and instead look at the two remaining fractions that we have here. Sine of 60 degrees would be the y value of the coordinate of the angle measured at 60 degrees and that y coordinate is square root 3 divided by 2. Sine of 45 degrees would be the y value of the coordinate here. That is square root 2 divided by 2. And that's going to be a fraction over 340. Now I'm running out of room here, but let's show you what we can do to set up this equation. And we can go to our calculator then to find out what b is equal to. Please remember that any time that we have a proportion, we can cross multiply the two known values that are diagonal from one another and divide by the third to find our unknown value. So in this case, B would be equal to 340 times square root 3 divided by 2 divided by square root 2 over 2. So over at the computer, we'll write this in 340 times square root 3 divided by 2. And I'll put parentheses around all of this. Oops. And we'll write that now as a fraction over top of square root of 2 
over 2. Whoops, got to be careful here. I don't want that square root to be over top of the denominator as well. Over 2. There we go. 340 times square root 3 over 2 divided by square root 2 over 2. And our result comes out to be this, 170 times the square root of 6. Now, I'm not interested in a precise answer here. I'd rather have the measurement in miles. So let's go with 416.4133 miles. 416.4133 miles. So that's how far the satellite is from Los Angeles at that precise point. Example one from page 450 reads, a tunnel is to be built through a mountain. To estimate the length of a tunnel, a surveyor makes the measurement shown in figure three. Use the surveyor's data to approximate the length of the tunnel. In this case, we have an included angle and two side lengths. So this looks like SAS to me. SAS is case number three. And case number three rely, relies on our law of cosines. The law of cosines requires just a little bit more patience to set up. Let's first identify our side lengths. We have a lowercase a and a lowercase b because they're opposite of angle a and angle b. And what we're looking for is this side length here, this C value, the distance between A and B through the mountain. So we're looking for side length C. Since we're looking for side length lowercase c, I might suggest using the cos law of cosines that looks like this. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of angle C. I like using this one because we know what A and B is. So we have these four parts known for us and we know what C is. So we can make replacements or substitutions in each of these positions and very easily calculate the unknown side length C. So when I set this up C squared would be equal to 212 squared plus 388 squared minus 2 times 212 times 388 times cosine of 82.4 degrees. Therefore C by itself would be equal to the square root of that because I could take the square root of both sides and we can come up with a nice result. Now it's important to verify and make sure that your uh, calculator is set in degrees anytime that you use the sine, cosine, or tangent calculation. So I'm going to hover my mouse pointer over top of this red X and this little settings bar up here in the corner. And it does indicate to me that my calculator is set in degrees so I can move forward. So I'm going to set up the square root of 212 squared plus 388 squared minus 2 times 212 times 388 times cosine of 82.4 degrees. I'm just going to verify that I have everything correct here. So 212 squared plus 388 squared minus 2 times 212 388 cosine 82.4 degrees. I think this looks pretty good. We'll press enter and see what we get. And our end result here is 416.8096. 416.8096. And the measurement is in feet. That tunnel is approximately 417 feet long. When using law of sines or law of cosines, it's really that simple. Uh, set up each equation carefully, indicate our known values, and use that to solve an unknown value or to solve the entire triangle. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. We'll be able to discuss these tomorrow in class.